Welcome to Reading Operator Anatomy. Touch designer networks are built out of operators and interacting with them makes up a large portion of the work that we do here inside of Touch Designer. Let's get started by taking a closer look at what makes up an operator. Here in our network, we have a collection of tops, chops, mats, sops, dats, and components. As we look at our operators laid out here, we can see that all operators have connectors. Tops, chops, mats, SOPs and DATs all have input and output connectors that are located on the left and right hand side of the operator. Components are a special class of operator in that they can hold other networks inside of them. They have top and bottom connectors that are used for hierarchy or parenting, and they can also have left and right input and output connectors based on the family that we've used inside of the operator. Connectors come in several different configurations. We have single connectors, uh, some specific number of connectors. For example, our add top has two inputs. Our count chop has three inputs and multi connectors. Multi connectors support a variable number of inputs. And this doesn't limit us to a specific number of connected operators, but rather allows us the opportunity to use many different inputs for an operator. Components also have input and output connectors located on the top and bottom, and they also have a multi-connector. Components also support input and output connectors from a specific operator family. And here we can see, for example, that we have a movie file in top that's running into our base top. If we pick, take a peek inside of our base component, we'll see that this base has an in top. It has a text top here in the middle, and then it has an out top. These in and out operators are what build the connectors for us here on our component. If we take a quick look, we can even see that if we add an in chop, that we will in fact have a new connector here on the top portion of our operator. We can see that we now have an input that's a green color, which means that we have an input for a chop. Taking a closer look at operators themselves, we have a few key features that are important to keep in mind. We have a set of flags that are located on the left-hand side of our operator. We have a set of flags that are located across the bottom portion of our operator. We have a name field, and we also have a viewer. Let's take a closer look at what that means. Getting a little closer here to the movie file in top, we can see that we have a viewer that gives us a peek at what's happening inside of this operator. Our flags located across the left-hand side are common across all operators, and these have a various set of operations. For example, the viewer flag allows us to toggle on and off the viewer. Our name for our operator is something that's user interactable. We can click on this and change the name of our operator. So I might change this to movie file in jelly beans, for example. We also have a set of flags that are specific to this operator family. For example, the display flag, which will put our the view of our operator in the background of our network, and the viewer active flag. The viewer active flag is consistent across all operators. All of our operators have a viewer active flag, and the viewer active flag has a special operation for us here inside of Touch Designer. The viewer active flag allows us to interact directly with what's inside of our operator. In the case of textures, that lets us do things like zoom in and pan around for our image. We can also right click inside of our operator when the viewer active flag is on and see a different contextual menu. For example, we might want to display the pixel values for what's happening inside of our operator. If we take a look at another operator type, say maybe our surface operators, the viewer active flag for surface operators allows us to tumble the geometry inside of this operator so we can move and pan around. Our right click contextual menu ha also has a different set of contextual options that are available for this particular operator family. You can tell that an operator is in viewer active mode when its border is no longer visible. And we can toggle the viewer active mode by using the small plus button viewer active flag in the bottom right hand corner. We can also turn on the viewer active flag by selecting an operator and hitting the A key on our keyboard. That will both toggle the viewer active flag on and off. 
Components also have a set of operator flags. Flags for components are located across the left-hand side of our component and additionally across the bottom portion of our component. Component flags similarly follow a family style configuration with the exception that 3D objects, panels, other, and dynamics have a set of common bottom portion flags that are attached to them. We can additionally take a look at something like, for example, our geometry component. And our geometry component here is one that we can make viewer active and tumble. Operator flags and operator anatomy is one of the key elements that we interact with all the time, and it's worth familiarizing yourself with the different types of ways that you can interact with operators and the different ways that you can view them.